Hello guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Finally, I mean, for fuck's sake, I really don't know what is wrong with me. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I'm currently doing the 100 days of makeup and my tiny little brain obviously can't focus on more than one thing or put like a lot of energy into more than one fucking thing. So I've been super focusing on Instagram and creating like cool Instagram content. Completely let YouTube slip my mind, which is shit. And I really have missed you guys. I've missed filming and I feel like I always do that. I feel like I take these stupid breaks and every single time I don't know why and I really regret it. It's almost like I lose focus of it for like a day and then that kind of like just snowballs into a week and then a fucking month, which is not ideal. Anyways, I am gonna try and focus my mind, <laughs> try and focus my mind on what am I trying to say? I'm gonna try and focus on more than one thing at a time and try and balance Instagram and YouTube because they are two very different platforms, two very different worlds. They require two very different types of attention. And honestly, like I'm so fucking over Instagram right now. I really, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't like it. I mean, I do, that's really stupid, of course I like it. It's just the fucking most aggravating thing. I feel like with YouTube, it's so much more chilled and I get so much more enjoyment out of it. I think YouTube is like where I wanna be, like it's where my kind of like, like my passion lies, but like where I kind of like get the most enjoyment is YouTube videos rather than Instagram content, which I, I really didn't think it was that way around. I thought I kind of preferred, not preferred, had more creative freedom when it came to Instagram, but like when I don't do the two, so when I don't film for YouTube and I don't do Instagram, content, I miss YouTube much more than I do Instagram. I don't know, it's confusing. I'd like, shut up, Chuck. Anyway, the most important thing is I am filming a video again because I feel like I've really let you guys down and I do sincerely apologize for that. I feel like my entire life is me apologizing for stuff and telling you guys that I need a haircut, which I do, and not actually going to get a haircut. It's like right up there on my list. So um, just so you guys know, this is not my plan. This is unintentional. I have been busy. <laughs> the last thing on my mind is a fucking haircut, but um, it should be because I look like trash. I look like garbage. Garbage. Anyways, today I'm filming a first impressions video. I feel, I feel like I do this all the time where I like take a little mini break from YouTube and then I come out with the first impressions. Like if you look back at the first impressions videos I've done, I probably haven't uploaded for a month before that. But I feel like I get so much new makeup within the time frame of me not filming. So first impressions just like completely make sense. It's the only thing I really should film. And plus I love them. They're my favorite types of videos as you guys well know. So that's what we're doing today. I have a fucking load of products beautifully laid out in front of me. I cannot wait to get stuck in. If you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you guys know the drill. And of course, if you are interested in my 100 days of makeup thing that I am doing over on the gram, then definitely follow me over there. If you don't already, which I'm sure at least one of you does. Again, I'm really sorry it's been so long, but I'm back, baby. Okay, so, oh my god, I didn't realize, I was, I've been wearing glasses since I came in. I didn't fucking realize how bright these lights were. Oh, mama. Uh, so I think I'm gonna start with my eyes. Oh, I had cheek filler. Hello. So that is what you guys have missed since I've been gone. I had Botox in my forehead. I had two rounds of Botox. In fact, two weeks apart to make sure I was like extra like. And I also had a little bit of corrective cheek filler. And I'm not saying corrective cheek filler in the way that like, you know when some people get Botox, they're like, it's because I sweat. It's because of headaches. That's all very well and good, but bitch, you wanted a smooth ass forehead. We know. Just say it. Own that shit. So I had a little bit of Botox in my forehead and I also had a cheek filler. My cheeks were really uneven and this is a completely personal thing. Cosmetic procedures like this are completely personal. And of course, if you don't like it or if you don't want to get it, do you. I'm not gonna force you. It's your forehead. So the lines in my forehead were really starting to piss me off. And mainly because I do makeup all the time, I realize more stuff about my face, I think. And I can still move my eyebrows. I'm not like a fucking robot. I just don't have any movement up here, which is fucking amazing. And I also... <laughs> And I also can't really frown, which I love. Like I can frown obviously, but like, I don't look angry at all. <laughs> and then uh, I had cheek filler. A, because I just wanted this portion of my face, like a little bit bigger. I know, me with a bigger face, can you fucking imagine? But I just wanted this area just a little bit more like, but my cheeks, like my temple here is quite concave. And this side, like if I move my hair, this side really isn't. <laughs> Again, this is just something I've noticed about myself. You guys probably don't even know this or care. But this is kind of like my mum's cheek structure. Like she has a very kind of like concave temple and then a really high, really like huge fucking cheekbone, which I love. Mine's not as big as hers. I wasn't blessed. But then this is, I feel like very much my dad's cheek. Like I got my mum's cheekbone and my dad's cheekbone together and the two just don't match. So I just had a little bit of cheek filler just to kind of... um 
Let's make them a little bit nicer. Anyway, I, I'm gonna start with eyes. I feel like I do this all the time. Five minute intros is <laughs> really unnecessary. But first of all, before I do eyes, I'm gonna do a primer just to give it time to soak into my skin. Cause I don't wanna put foundation on like a just primed face. I feel like it just doesn't work for me. So I'm taking this from Milk Makeup. This is brand new. This is the Hydro Grip Primer. Uh, this says hemp derived cannabis extract hydrates to plump and smooth for blissed out skin. This literally sounds like my fucking dream primer. It's got blue agave extract, um, all day hydration and hold. Like it just sounds like a really great product. It's got aloe water, cherry blossom, hyaluronic acid, green tinted formula, goes on clear to work across all skin tones and all skin types. Okay, this looks really cool. I love this packaging so much. I really love like strip back packaging. Nothing too like crazy or intense. It almost looks like a fragrance bottle. I kind of love. Feels like thick, but like in a good way. Almost kind of how I imagine like raw aloe vera to feel. So I'm just gonna massage that into my skin. It feels grippy. Like it feels thick and not sticky, but almost kind of. God, I am just the best YouTuber. Tacky, is that the word? Okay, so, so far I really like the feeling of that. I feel like makeup is going to stick to it. It just feels like one of those products. But for now, I'm gonna let that soak into my skin and I'm gonna get started on eyes. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in. I'm just gonna prime them off camera. I'm gonna be using the P. Louise base like I always do. So I'll be back in 0.2 seconds. So I've got three palettes here. I really don't know what, what I want to do or what I want to use. So I just grabbed three that I haven't used before. So this is the NYX Ultimate Edit Palette. This is the Brights one. This is the EYN Bright Palette from, oh my God, Beauty Bay. And my mind completely fucking froze. And I've also got the Dominique Latte Palette. This I know is not new, but um, I I've never actually used this. This is from Dominique Cosmetics, which is Kristen Dominique's brand. I'm gonna take Pumpkin Spice from the Dominique Palette. I'm taking that on a Morphe M514 brush. It looks like the MAC 221. It's a teeny, teeny bit skinnier, which I kind of like for the crease. And then I like taking the MAC brush for uh, blending. Kind of wanted it like a little bit more vibrant, but obviously this is not a vibrant orange. It's nice though, it seems pretty pigmented. They also seem like really, like really buttery, creamy formulas, which I love. The only thing is, is formulas like this, I found do tend to have a little bit more kick up in the pan, but they always seem to blend really nicely just because they are like so buttery, I guess. I hate using terms like that because I feel like everyone describes eyeshadows like that, but they're so smooth and so soft that they do just tend to blend a little bit nicer. So it seems like a pretty substantial eyeshadow. So I'm gonna go into the Beauty Bay palette and take the shade Hello Sunshine, which is the nice yellow. Um, I actually swatched the purple in that, so that explains that mess. So this is the MAC 221, which I really like for this stage of blending. I'm just gonna start really, really slightly blending those edges. I feel like we all know this is leaning towards a warm cut crease. Please don't hate me. I haven't been here for a while. I feel like my comeback should be with what I do best. <laughs> See what I mean? It just like that type of formula, that really smooth formula just blends so nicely. I know I'm taking it really high, but um, I don't really care. I feel like I cut my crease pretty high anyway, so I kind of compensate for that by taking shadow up to my fucking eyebrow. I think I'm gonna go in with the shade Drama Queen, which is the purple from the Beauty Bay palette, just on the first brush that I used. And I'm gonna really kind of like tilt my head here. Just really kind of like pack that in there. I think a good tip for this, if I could give you one, is to tilt your head like slightly back and then hold a mirror like down so as that you're looking almost like straight down. So this purple's coming off like a really grayish brown, which is fine, I'm not mad. And then I'm gonna take the shade Hot Stuff and a mix of the yellow shade again, and I'm gonna slightly blend the edges of that purple shade. The Dominique Latte palette shade was fine, but I just kind of wanted it as more of like a base shade. And then go in with this shade just to make it kind of like super intense. And then I like to go in with the darker shade again and just really kind of deepen that up and not blend this out. Darker purples, it always is the same. Like, they're obviously really hard shadows to make because this is a little bit drier than I would like. It happens with a lot of brands, unfortunately, even if, like, the rest of the eyeshadows are really bomb, which is the case with Beauty Bay. Like, I really do like their palettes. But darker purples, I mean, purples in general, but darker purples especially, just always seem a lot drier than every other eyeshadow, which, in my opinion, makes them a little bit harder to blend. So I'm just taking some of the P. Louise Base and the Fenty concealer. I'm just gonna cut my crease. I really like the Fenty concealer mixed with the base at the moment. It's um, it's super bright and it's quite a, not like dry concealer, but it's quite a matte concealer. I feel like it's really great for the lid because it's not gonna stay like super wet and kind of like cakey. 
Like, see how high my crease goes? If I don't take dark shadows up here, you just won't be able to see them. My eyes are so hooded, it's an actual joke. And then I'm going in with these two little guys from Incredible Cosmetics. These are the Lid Slick Eye Pigments. I have the shades Kinda Care, Kinda Don't, and Just Do You, so it's like a true yellow gold and then like a bronze. I swatched these. It feels like a cushion, which is really weird. And then like, bitch, what the fuck? And then swatched, like, Ma what? So I'm gonna take the shade at kinda K, kinda don't first of all. And pop that on with my finger. Oh, damn it. Oh my God. I really hope this is reading on camera. Cause that's fucking beautiful. I feel like it doesn't pick up very well with a brush, which kinda sucks. Okay, so obviously because of the nature of this product, it's kind of disturbed my really clean, sharp line. Um, it's flaky, but I guess that's just like the type of product it is. So there is also like a little bit of fallout. There wasn't really any fallout with the shadows. There was a teeny bit with like the dark purple, but again, dark purples are really awkward, awkward colors. So as we are right now, I do really like everything. The only thing that's like annoying me is that the actual like crease that I did is, looks a little bit messy now. Okay, so uh, ignore the super, super fucking redness on my face. I just had like major dramas with this eye. I totally fucked it up. These, um, I think I'm using them wrong or I don't think they're meant for like precise cut crease kind of looks just because they're fucking like they're messy. They were all over my face and I still have like glitter basically everywhere. So uh, <laughs> let's move on to skin. I'm going to be taking the Floma Matte Touch Foundation. This is a little bit dark for me or it looks a little bit dark for me. So I'm going to mix it with my NARS Natural Radiant. What's this called? Uh, the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation, which is one of my all-time favorites. So I have the shade Oslo in the NARS and Fair Ivory and Floma. I really like the other Floma foundation, which I don't have. It's in my foundation drawer. But um, the other foundation is really, really great and I like it. So hopefully this one is too. I know it's matte and matte foundations aren't really my thing, but I have been surprised in the past with some matte foundations. And if it is super matte, then hopefully mixing it with the NARS foundation will kind of like help it a bit just because that one's super radiant. Shh. Oh, the reason I'm using this, by the way, obviously this is not a first impressions, but I have not used this for so long. It fucking may as well be a first impressions. Okay, so I am one warning you all right now, this is going to be darker than my skin tone. But I also kind of feel like, what's new? Mm, so much darker. This shade is Fair Ivory. Fair and Ivory. Basically white and white. And it is still darker than me. The coverage on this though seems pretty flipping fantastic at the moment. So I've recently changed up my skincare routine a little bit. My esthetician, but is it esthetician? Like people who deal in like aesthetics? I think so. Anyway, we were talking about skin and kind of like my skin problems. And after I had the like first round of Botox, she sent me away with some skin products from Illumia MD. I've been using them for a few weeks now. They're mainly like supposed to target my redness, which I feel like they have actually done. When I look at past videos of the redness on my cheeks, I feel like it has minimized it a lot. She did say that because I'm doing makeup every single day, it won't be as effective. Uh, but I do genuinely think it's really helped so far. I was using the moisturizer, but now I'm not. I'm using I can't remember the names of everything, but I will leave them like listed down below just in case you guys do want to check them out. I'm using the Hydra Boost Cleanser. Like I said, I will leave everything down there if I don't get any of the names right. And I think it's the Sensor Calm Cleanser as well. Could be totally wrong. And then I'm using a serum, which is like specifically designed to tackle the redness on my cheeks. I was using the moisturizer, but I've switched back to the Kiehl's one, which I've been told is totally fine to do. Yeah, even with uh, like texture as well, like the smoothness of my skin overall, I feel like has improved, which I am really, really happy about so so far i'm really loving them obviously skincare is very much a journey it's not something that happens or like changes your skin instantly it's something that you have to like keep at for a long periodically time before you do notice like a really intense change but so far i feel like they're doing a really good job of helping my skin okay we're just gonna like ignore my pale ass neck this is so much darker than me i'm actually kind of uh loving the finish of this it is maybe like maybe a little bit too matte we'll see how it goes but so far mary She's fine. Okay, so I just went ahead and threw on a concealer. I don't have a new concealer to use. So I just, what did I use? I mixed the Revolution Concealer and Define with the NARS Creamy Concealer. I haven't used this one for so, so like I'm literally talking like two and a half fucking years I haven't used this for. It has been a long ass time. So basically a first impressions again. Forgot how much I love this. Cannot wait to use it some more. Um, and I just set my under eyes with powder and like my nose and my forehead and here. So for my cheeks, I'm gonna be going in with this from NARS. I'm really, really excited to use this. This is part of the new Exposed collection. This is the Cheek Palette. This is what it looks like. That is fucking beautiful. I, 
<sighs> Something about NARS, I just absolutely love them. I think this is so fucking beautiful. And if we open this up, ta-da. So there's two kind of like bronzy shades. I mean, I'm gonna use them as bronzers. There's a highlight shade and then to me, three blush shades. Anyway, I'm gonna take this Morphe and Jaclyn Hill brush. This is the O2. I'm gonna take this shade here and try and bronze with this. I think it might be a little bit too peachy to be honest. Okay, that's very peachy. I'm just gonna add a teeny, teeny bit of contour. I normally do this before I try bronzers anyway. I don't know why I didn't today. I just thought I would give this palette like a full moment. But I feel like adding a little bit of contour might actually be the right thing to do. In this situation, if you are interested, I'm using the Most Wanted Contouring Palette from Art Deco. I've been reaching for this so much recently. Just for the shade Contour 1, I think it's kind of perfect. I think it blends really well and it's not like too intense, but it's still like there, you know? And while we're here, I'm just gonna take it on my nose because why not? Um, I refrain from putting contour around my forehead just because I think it looks like it, it's supposed to make something look like sunken and I don't particularly want my temples looking like really sunken. I think it is very aging. So I try and just stick to bronzer up in that area. And back into bronzer, I'm gonna go back into the NARS palette, but I'm gonna switch brushes. So I'm gonna take my Wi-Fi, which is my favorite brush. I don't know why I was fucking experimenting with this, but I'm just taking that same middle shade. I'm just gonna kind of like pat that on there. It's very warm. Like I said, this is kind of, this might be a blush palette, which I mean, like I really don't care. Like I'm a huge fan of blush anyway, which uh, I'm sure you guys are aware of. So if this just looks like a blush, cool. Okay, so like I thought, these blend beautifully. It's just that kind of like really light, not very pigmented formula, which I have said in the past, I really, really like with blush, just because you can add a lot really quickly. Like highlighter, I mean, fucking give it to me, pack it on. When it comes to blush, I do like something with a little less pigmentation, just because it kind of gives you the chance to build it up. So you don't look like you've been fucking like smacked in the side of the face with a steak. Okay, so this is, this is very much a blush. It might not be on other skin tones, but it's very much a blush on me. I just think this is blended so beautifully, and it's it's almost got like a slight sheen to it. It's a bit like, a, it's such a creamy weird formula and I don't quite know what formula it is, but it almost is like, like a cream, but it's not. Anyway, I'm gonna go in with this end shade because to me, that's a highlight. I'm gonna take a little bit of it just cause it looks quite golden. And I do have another highlight I wanna try it. So this is gonna be like our base highlight. It's not super intense, but that formula is fucking divine. It's like wet. It is, <laughs> that is so fucking nice. This is blending into my skin like a fucking dream. And like I said, it's not crazy intense, but like mama, it is there. Okay, I cannot stress enough how much I love this formula. Oh, honey. Okay, so I'm gonna try out another highlight. This is the Distorted Dreams Highlighting Palette from Sleek Makeup in collaboration with Miss Fame. Two things I have an absolute love for, Miss Fame and Sleek, in particular Sleek Highlighting Palettes. So this is what is super reflective. I really hate reflective packaging. So this is what it looks like. These three here are creams and then these two are powders. I'm gonna take this one here just because it's light. It's really pink, which uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Hoping it doesn't come off like too pink. Okay, so upon first impressions, that's a lot more subtle, more soft than say like Solstice palette, but Solstice is obviously that bitch. Um, I'm not like an enormous fan of colored highlighters. Mm, this one is fine just cause it's more like a reflex, but like really intense colored highlighters are just not my thing, but this one's fine. I think that's all I'm gonna add. Crazy, I know, normally I'm like a fucking lighthouse, but um, I think I'm gonna keep it soft today. Like I said, not as intense as Sleek's like Solstice palette, but. <laughs> I don't think anything is. So for blush, I'm gonna dip into this shade here, I think maybe mix it with a little bit of that shade. This one's like really, really like peach, like really salmon-y. Salmon. I really like this formula. It's not really stupidly pigmented like some blushes. I really, do. I wish I could explain this formula. If you have a NARS counter near you, just <laughs> go in and touch it. It's so creamy. Whew, okay, love that. Highly recommend. Okay, so for brows, I have the new Urban Decay brow product. There's a primer, which I won't use. There's a brow gel, which I might use. There's a brow putty, which I think I won't use. And then there's a waterproof pencil and ink stain, which I'm going to use. So th uh, this is brunette medium brown, which I hope is going to be fine. Okay, so this is like one end is a micro brow pencil, one end is like a felt pen. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna start out with the micro pencil side. Actually, I need to fucking brush my eyebrow. Uh, I'm just gonna fill in all of my my spa series, the same as I usually do. I'm gonna leave the front because I wanna try the felt tip side. I'm gonna fill in everything else. Okay, so then I'm gonna take the felt tip side. Felt that up. 
love that. Okay, that's a lot finer than a micro brow pencil. So it's kind of creating like more realistic, like bushy, fluffy hairs, which I'm obsessed with. I really, really do like that. Okay, so for my lips, I have the new Huda Beauty Power Bullet Matte Lipsticks. These are just three of the shades that I kind of am thinking about. I don't know which one I want to use. I have swatched all of these and they are stunning. They are so flipping pigmented. It's not even funny. And the formula feels really, really nice as well. So I'm excited to actually like get these on my lips. Okay, so I'm going to go with the shade Joyride. This is just like a really gorgeous like light brown. Love, love, love the colour. Okay, wow. Absolutely fucking loving that. It's like really, com it's so pigmented for a start. Like it's so pigmented and such a soft formula, but it's like, it's a matte obviously, but it's like a really comfortable matte. Okay, I'm gonna throw on some lashes and then I'll be right back with the final look. Okay then guys, so here we have the very final look. What do you guys think? I am super, super happy with the way this turned out. I am super happy with all of the products that I use. Most of the products. Most of the products that I used. Now, all in all, I really feel like this has been a successful first impressions. Now that everything's done, like, with the eyes and stuff, I, I'm, I'm just liking it. I kind of got a bit iffy there in the middle, a little bit panicky, but I think it all came together fine. Literally obsessed with this lipstick. Love the brow products from Women Decay. Absolutely in love with the NARS cheek palette. Yeah, I think it's been a good one. It's been a good video. I will leave everything that I use in today's video, including the skincare I was on about earlier, in the description box below. Anyways, if you guys did enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up for me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and subscribe to my channel. And of course, as always, any video ideas or anything you want to see from me, let me know in the comment section. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed. I love you and I'll hopefully see you in my next one. Bye guys. I am fucking loving this look. But I'm about to take it off because it is 10 past one in the morning.